Hello lovebugs and welcome back to another daily-ish December video. Today I thought I would show off one of my favorite places to bring clients to Ecuador and this is Cuicocha Lake. So let me just do a little pan here. So this is the volcanic lake Cuicocha and it was formed because there was a volcanic eruption from the volcano that we're standing on called Cotacachi. And Cotacachi, the volcano, the modern volcano part is somewhere behind those clouds. So I'll insert a picture of like the scraggly mountain rock top. Very descriptive. The lake is about three kilometers wide and you can walk all the way around it. There is a long trail to do that. The trail is about 12 kilometers and the highest point is about 3,300 meters or 11,000 feet. So I have not made it all the way around because there are many stairs and I don't like walking that much. But you definitely can walk all the way around and it takes anywhere between five and eight hours. The locals can definitely do it in five, but they're also kind of you know, used to walking at 11,000 feet. <laughs> so I find most foreigners usually take closer to the eight hours to get all the way around it. The lake is about 200 meters deep, so it's pretty deep and was formed after the volcano Cotacachi erupted. The two islands back there are actually the old cones of the old volcano that has since filled up with water. So this lake behind me, doesn't actually have any fish living in it and that's because it has sulfuric acid and if you get close to those islands back there you can't walk on the islands but you can take a boat out there and if you go into those or like through the channel between those two islands you can see the bubbles of sulfuric acid bubbling up from the depths so there's no fish in there because you know sulfuric acid kills them there is a species of duck though that swims on top of the lake in between those two islands is called the Channel of Dreams and it's a sacred site and many people still get married between those two between those two islands. It's now prohibited to walk on the islands or build anything on those islands after I believe it was a club was built there and then caught on fire and it was only a, you know minorly a disaster. So now you can't go onto the islands at all, you can't walk on them and nothing is permitted to be built on them either. You can however take a little boat ride and take a little boat ride around the scenery and they will take you through the channel of dreams. It's a really really nice boat ride. This is in the reserve Cotacachi Cayapas and it's actually one of the biggest reserves in Ecuador, not the biggest, so this reserve spans two provinces, that of Ibarra and that of Esmeraldas, which is on the coast. And so you actually get a really diverse array of plants and animals and just ecosystems because clearly up here at 10,000 feet is a little bit chilly and it doesn't sustain like huge trees and this is kind of an ecosystem we call the Paramo but on the coast you get like full-on rainforest so this whole reserve actually encompasses those two kind of major ecosystems and all the transition in between so that's really really cool. Quicocha is Quichua for Lake of the Quis and Quis are guinea pigs. And I've heard lots of reasons everything from there's a lot of guinea pigs up in this region to the main main islands in the middle one of them looks like a guinea pig I'm not really sure what the answer is to that but this site is important for cultural uses, just kind of like an important historic site for the indigenous people that live here. And it's still used and still, and still celebrated for the cultural wonder that it is. For example, shamans will do ritual baths in the lake during the important summer solstice festival in Tirayme. The channel of dreams that's between the two islands is also considered a important cultural site with many people still choosing to get married in between the two islands. The landscape is predominantly dominated by an ecosystem that we call paramo or high altitude ecosystem grass stuff. That was a very good definition. But you'll find everything from weird grasses to bromeliads to kind of short scrubby little plants. Pumamaki, which is a homemade leaf, as you see this up here, uh, is also a common plant that you can find here. And pumamaki means puma paw, or puma hand, technically maki is hand, but you know, puma paw sounds better in English, <laughs> so puma paw. <laughs> Plants that you can find here have cultural and or medical uses. For example, the puma paw plant is good for the stomach 
and a couple plants that produce natural dyes you can also find up here. So this berry, you can eat it, but only a few of them because they're a hallucinogen, but they're also like a dye. So you like smash the berry up and it's this really pretty red dye and I drew a heart on the rock because I'm a child. But, see. And so local people in Otavalo would use these um, to dye fabrics and textiles back in the day. Yep. So this plant is also still used by local people to naturally dye textiles. And this is a little flower, but here's what the little berry looks like. And this one's not quite ripe yet. This one needs, you know, like another week or so. But I'll still show you because you'll, you'll get the point. But if I take the berry and I just smash it a little bit like this, then you see this purple dye come out of it. And these berries are used to make purple dyes, a little bit of a bluish dye, and sometimes even black dyes that get, they get that dark. You can find a dazzling array of orchids up here as well. I think a lot of people are surprised to find, you know, even though it's kind of like dullish and, and grass-like, you can find some really interesting and really beautiful plants up here, like these little small orchids that were just in bloom right now and so, so beautiful. I was mentioning earlier that you can find bromeliads like these ones, but you can also find a stunning array of little kind of shrub plants, but also really surprisingly in some little micro habitats and little micro ecosystems, you can actually find some really interesting ferns as well. Like this area is really rich and biodiverse, and I don't think that you would notice that just from a straight up kind of first glance at it. But once you get closer, you start to notice all the really beautiful flowers and plants and some really interesting insects and other animals scurrying around found. You can tell that flies are super important pollinators up here. I found all sorts of hoverflies before and different flowers and this flower, I didn't smell it, so I don't know if it smells bad, but it's super attractive to a wide variety of flies. When I started filming it, I could really only find blow flies on it, like this one in the family Californidae. But I've also seen tachinid flies walking around on this thing and a bunch of other blow flies and just a whole, like little house flies and stuff on it as well. So you can tell that flies are pretty important pollinators up here, which is I think is particularly interesting because I think that flies are often left out of the equation of pollination. They are not really considered pollinators and all, the, all of the fame goes to the bees or the butterflies, but there's whole ecosystems and whole, you know, flowers and plants that are specifically pollinated by flies. So here's a cool example and you can just see the diversity of flies all over this thing. So I'm pretty excited about it. You know, the entomologist. In the afternoons and when it warms up a little bit, you can often find a whole range of butterflies and also sometimes dragonflies if you're lucky. The butterflies zooming around in this short little clip look a little bit like fritillaries if you're from the state so orange with kind of silver cells but they're in a different genus here they're in the genus Dione and this is about how often they sit still which is you know like never but they're really fun to just sit down and watch them flit across the sky the insect diversity here though in general is pretty astounding for being you know 10,000 feet we are in the Otavalo region although Otavalo is somewhere down in the towns below. The volcano behind me is Imbabura. So this, this area is definitely defined by the volcanoes that have exploded quite a few times over their history. Well, love bugs, that's it for me. I hope that you like learning a little bit about the Quicocha Lake and this little area, this little ecosystem up here by Otovalo. I know that a lot of people talk about Otovalo in Ecuador. It's like, oh, the market. And the market is really interesting, but I think these little natural wonders are so much more interesting than than just kind of like the artisanal market, but that's my personal opinion. <laughs> so I will see you all very soon for another daily-ish December coming, coming right up. It's now bright. Click up here for more videos that you will, that you will like, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.